All those advances in technology we have to think still more profoundly. Start the awakening. True Stream Media. With Aaron Dykes and Melissa Melton on Unbound Radio. And that was one of the first graphics we ever made at TrueStreamMedia.com. And look what the message of it is. End the cycle of a washing machine with a brain. End the cycle of brainwashing. And it's a great design from Melissa Melton. It is an original and it is available, I think. But we're not here really to discuss that. I just want to give you an example of brainwashing. And it's a prime one. Can they control us as humans in the society that they built? Has technology, given the scientific dictatorship, the means to covertly, to subtly control us? Can they really do it? Well, I don't know. There's a lot of examples. Here's one I found just digging through the newsreel, as I love to do. It's a universal newsreel, some kind of fashion show pet with show in models New York and animals. Some very special pets, including this cheetah named Last Savage. Typical cute stuff, but check out this training duck. Turns nursing in here from the well, I talked over it, so check it out again. Check out this cute duck. Cheetah named Last Savage. Pavlovian training turns this duck into an entertainer and a threat to Carmen Cavallaro. So just for a moment, a very serious mention of the Pavlovian training of the animals and then back to the cute lines about how they're playing music better than famous performers and so on. And let's watch some more examples of these Pavlovian trained animals. It's even enough to worry Liberace. Would you believe a basketball playing chicken? Well, how about a chicken basketball player? Conditioned Since he's response. No Chamberlain. That's Since he's already a equipped with drumsticks, why shouldn't he be the Gene Krupa of Duckland? Well, yeah, it's very creepy. I mean, this duck, all these ducks, chickens, all these animals. And this wild chick is a great dancer. She likes to neck, too. That's a cheap really date, sad. just a couple of that kernels of really corn is your only expense. Put one black duck on piano, the other duck on drums. And that stuff definitely goes on, and I'm not even going there, but I'm just scratching the surface with here's how a one-minute news reel will put something on the surface that's cute, seems innocuous, seems obviously innocent and friendly, but it's they just not. just slide it in there that it's Pavlovian training. But this Pavlovian training, literal animal conditioning, is being used in the education system, and I know I've talked with Charlotte Isserby at length on numerous occasions, and she really gets into that. It's in her book, too, Dumbing about how... America. Yeah, they're training children a little literal animal training, and they're circumventing a human being's ability to think and ask soul-searching questions. Critical analysis. Yeah, to learn critical analysis and all of, of it, and they're substituting that for training. Like, we want you to do this specific task, you go do it, and we're going to basically reward you through behaviorism on the surface level that's just good job, bad job. On a deeper level, it's really just programming your entire behavior and so check out this clip. She mentions it specifically. And this is Skinner, right? This is Skinner. This he, is the guy that put his kid in a box for two years, right? Oh, Tom? yeah. And it's creepy, but his work very much parallels Pavlov. You've got Aldous Huxley, who you heard in the intro of this video. He talks about the same thing, that since these people and the aggregated psychological control of humans, society really has reached a point where we're sophisticatedly controlled by technology. And so Iserby argues that if he can make a pigeon a high achiever, if if Skinner can, then they could control your kid too. Control what goes into their brain, and if they control enough kids, control all of society. And there's been a number of thinkers who brought that up. But let's watch this clip. I can pigeons read? This one gives every indication. Because he's been taught to distinguish between two words and to behave appropriately. And so he's not actually he's reading, training. but appears to read because he's just done the conditioned response. As we saw with the cute ducks in the newsreel, uh, the one that was dancing was actually, I think the drum playing one was my favorite. But the point is, they've got some really sophisticated entertainers in our society, too. And how did we learn to behave this way? He's learned his different response to each sign by being rewarded with food. Obviously, the food reward is one of the most common because it's an immediate reward. It gives immediate satisfaction on a very complex, you know, physiochemical level as well as mental for animals as well as humans. So they use the conditioned response food incentive. And isn't this the same thing so the bird gambling is based on? Oh, well, I'll get to that in just a second. It isn't yeah. acting independently. Its behavior is shaped by controlling its environment. 
and then they go into the more sophisticated forms of how Skinner by worked the out. Environment. Yeah, he controlled the environment by working out a scheduled reinforcement of that food incentive. Obviously, the pigeon will sit there and eat the food all day, but they get him to respond to, you know, small mistakes he did learning the trick and learn how to do it more perfectly by scheduling the reward. You don't give it every time he does it right. You just give the reward maybe sometime like randomly a, yeah. every 15 minutes gate. X number of times. And it's exactly the same way that gambling works for humans. And they go on to explain that in this documentary. And so you can see already how humans are hooked by this too. You get a certain kind of token reward. In different areas of society, you get patted on the head, but you're really just being trained to behave, to behave and to conform. And again, this comes out in Aldous Huxley's writings, Brave New World Revisited, 1958. He also talked about it in a number of key uh, speeches and addresses, like his Berkeley one from 1962, shortly before his death. Really odd day that he died, too, which was the same day JFK was assassinated, but that's a whole other story. But he talks about here how overpopulation, quantity, quality, morality, over-organization of society. These are some of the most important things and part of the road to that Brave New World book that he wrote back in 1932. How propaganda is used in democratic societies as well as dictatorships. And they have some differences, but ultimately they have a lot of things in common too. There's the art of selling, there's brainwashing, there's chemical persuasion, subconscious persuasion sleep learning which he calls hypnopadia education for freedom that's very orwellian and on and on and on and you see later in the book under over organization and propaganda in a democratic society he talks about how dictators of today rely on repetition suppression and rationalization and isn't it true for the so-called free world as well the repetition of commercials the repetition of lessons they teach in school the repetition of the expectation for elections. We even saw that recently with the Miss America pageant when Miss Alabama was asked about what she thought about spying. and She said it's great if it keeps her safe, and they gave her runner-up. Oh, yeah, so it's that, that condi- it, they almost an expected her, but prompt. That's everybody else as well that saw that, all the little girls watching that and saw that and said, oh, wow, if I go along with those kinds of atrocities on myself and the government, then I'll get a tiara and a bunch of flowers. And she wasn't automatically the winner, but just the fact that she was up there she giving that answer, up. she was runner-up, and it's an implied reward. And, yeah, small, impressionable children watching – will think that's the appropriate way to behave, to be honored as someone who's beautiful or recognized in society. And and here it is. And suppression, of course, speaks for itself. But all the things they don't tell you, the things hidden, and rationalization, those are the excuses for why we have to fight the war on terror, why certain things go in the textbook, why we can't explain what's really going on, why for national security we have to, oh, isn't it a shame, we have to keep some things secret from the public and all the other things they do and how far down the road are we from being animally trained on how we're supposed to behave in society well, just and like chemical that. responses i mean chemical responses you see that every single day in all of our food is filled with additives and most of it is processed and pre-made for us we don't know what all is in there and everybody's on all kinds of medications all throughout society i mean there, there's so much about this that is going on right now everywhere well that's what i mean there's that bbc documentary the century of the self with edward bernays and it really lays out a lot of just what that one man did for public relations for what he himself called propaganda in shaping society how they learned to market to people especially in that post-world war ii era how they you know subtly pick colors that people respond to and and patterns that they learn from more and as this all aggregates and as society continues to concentrate and as things are more and more mechanized and less in your individual hands you're being marketed what seems like a wide array of choices but they all have the same hidden ingredients that are bad for you rationalized on why they have to put them in there to preserve the foods why they have to do that to package your life and then sell it back to you because they we have, have to, to put colored dye that causes cancer into our food because people want their food to be neon yellow. And, and those food ingredients are an example. They're important, and we specifically need to talk about them and learn how to remove them from our life. But it's also emblematic of their overall rationale on the how agenda. they need to control your life. And here's why. 
and this is for freshness and this is for preservatives and this is to keep the bad guys away and you know it goes on and on and why you can't have extremists in politics and that's why you have to have the same old people and at a certain point human society is never exactly the same as the extreme example of the ant colony but bears a lot of resemblance there's this tendency towards the center there's this overall movement along the same patterns and individuals get blurred quite literally in between the lines of the repetitive motion of the conditioned response the chemical signals in the cases of ants that tell them where to go who to obey you know what the chain of command is that is ultimately for the queen and human society has some relations there and you can see those patterns a lot better in time-lapse footage uh, that I took here and then put an effect on than you can in real time with the naked eye but you've seen it yourself observing anthills how they behave and if you think about it for long enough this kind of animal behavior plays into our human lives as well especially in the technologically organized society and I'll leave you with that basic thought right now any closing words no, it's just pretty horrifying. It's just scary. I don't want to be like Pavlov's I mean, you duck. can see how this is going to go from here and how it's just getting incrementally worse in our society now and how that's going to only continue. Well, that's part of Huxley that obviously there's Pavlov, there's Skinner, but it's even worse than that because they can give you a pill to make you lear literally learn to love your ser servitude and be chemically doped up on, on They're Soma. They're doing that now already. And here's... Pavlov's Duck. We'll talk to you later. We're starting a radio show soon, by the way. True Stream Media on Unbound Radio, Saturdays, 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern. Check it out. But for now, Pavlov's Duck. Pavlovian training turns this duck into an entertainer and a threat to Carmen Cavallaro. It's even enough to See worry Liberace.